what the Lakers should do in free agency and their trade targets. So if you watch these videos, you know the drill. We start off with a couple of free agency players I think they should target, and then we'll get to the potential trades. So first we have Seth Curry. Now Seth Curry is an unrestricted free agent, and if there was ever a perfect time to get him, it's now. Seth Curry ended up finishing the season not actually playing that much. Like he kind of fell out of the rotation a bit because they were incorporating their new players like Mikhail Bridges and all them. The Lakers are in a tough position money-wise because of LeBron and AD's salary, and then they want to re-sign Austin Reeves. That is the vibe that we are getting. So with all those three players, they're not going to have any money. And right now, they technically only have six players on the roster, and that's only if they accept Malik Beasley's team option, which I don't think they will. But anyway, if you can figure out a way to get Seth Curry, this would solve a lot of their issues because Seth Curry is a very good shooter, and the one thing that the Lakers very much lacked was three-point shooting. He's at the perfect time of his career to play alongside LeBron and AD, and also he definitely wants to win a championship especially because his brother has four so if i'm the lakers this is one of the first phone calls i'm trying to make the next player that they should target is alec burks and you'll notice in this video that the players that they are targeting are players who can shoot because again that was their biggest flaw so i feel like that is the area they need to just solidify especially given that it's a three-point shooters league like you gotta have three-point shooters now alec burks is not the three-point shooter that seth curry is however alec burks can get a bucket anytime he has a team option with the Pistons, but I do think they're going to decline it. Although he played well for them, but I do think they want to move in, you know, the future direction with Cade and all them. You know, the guard position is kind of filled because Cade is coming back. Like I said, you have Jaden Ivey, Killian Hayes is still there. And you also traded for James Wiseman at the trade deadline. Jalen Dern was very good this year. So I think they're trending in a younger direction, which is why I feel like they will decline Alec Burks' team option and he'll be free to go where he wants. And similar to Seth Curry, I do think he can get more than a vet minimum on the market. But there may be a chance where the Lakers get him at a bet minimum. Maybe he wants to win a ring also, and he's willing to take less and sacrifice. He is someone who can get a bucket, so I just feel like this would be a nice fit. It would also add some more depth to their roster. And the last free agency target is Reggie Jackson. Now, I did say earlier in the video that the Lakers will only have like six players under contract in the summer. So I'm going into this with the assumption that they're going to lose a lot of those players. Like, I don't think Dennis Schroeder will be back. I think he's going to get a bigger contract elsewhere. I don't know that Lonnie Walker will be back. So I do think they're going to lose a bunch of the players on the team. And Reggie Jackson fits that Dennis Schroeder role perfectly. Like, I always like Reggie Jackson's game. I feel like he literally would fill that role so well. And he's definitely hungry for playing time because he's on Denver right now and he doesn't really play at all. So like what better than to come to the Lakers and to be able to have a big role because I'm not sure D'Lo comes back either. Is he the starting point guard? I'm not sure, but I feel like he would have a big role on this team, kind of like how he's done the Clippers. And I feel like he would suit that role very well. He is someone who can create his own shot. And we've seen him like get hot and kind of take over games for the Clippers and win them games. So he is someone I think the Lakers should get. Now we're on to the trade targets. The first one is Jordan Clarkson. Now Jordan Clarkson can technically be a free agent. He has a player option. But I feel like he might opt into his player option. And although the Lakers <laughs> did just make a trade with the Jazz at the trade deadline... I think it's pretty clear that the Jazz are in somewhat of a rebuild mode, you know, around Laurie Markkinen and Walker Kessler and stuff like that. So I don't think they would not want Jordan Clarkson on the team next year, but if they could get something for him, I do think they would be okay with that. So in this scenario, I feel like you would have to give up Rui because you're not giving up Austin Reeves. So they obviously don't want Jared Vanderbilt back. Like, I love Jared Vanderbilt, but I'm saying they don't want him back because they just traded him to you. <laughs> so I feel like it would have to be a Rui for Jordan Clarkson deal, something around those lines. And that would be very interesting because although Jordan Clarkson was a Laker in his past life, Jordan Clarkson, we know, can shoot the lights out. And again, what did I say the Lakers need? Shooting. And Rui was awesome in the playoffs. Like, he really was. So I'm not saying the Lakers should just give him up because he was very valuable for them. But Jordan Clarkson fits a role that they really need. And although Rui does fit a role that they need as well because they're only going to have six people on the roster, I do feel like... They need to be more guard heavy, especially given the fact that I think that D'Lo is going to be gone, Dennis Schroeder. Like, they need to make sure they fill those roles because although AD doesn't want to play center for 48 minutes a night, at least you have Anthony Davis. Like, in my scenario, you don't have anybody at the guard position. So, like, you need Jordan Clarkson more than you need Rui, if that makes sense. Like, yes, I think they re-signed Austin Reeves, but he could fill that Malik Beasley role, like, literally from the Jazz. The Jazz, <laughs> the Jazz made all the trades. He could fill that Malik Beasley role that the Lakers initially made the trade for Malik Beasley for. Jordan Clarkson can be that, so I feel like this would be a really good fit. Keep in mind, Rui's a free agent, so this would have to be a sign-in trade, which also leads to other salary things, but I'm just throwing out scenarios. 
And the last player they should target is Bogdanovich. Now, I feel like I remember at the trade deadline, they were trying to target him. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like they were. So if they were, which I think they were, they should do it again. <laughs> you notice the theme yet? Players who can shoot. Because again, the Lakers' biggest flaw was three-point shooting. And Bogdanovich is a very good three-point shooter and someone who also can score very well. Wow, I just realized a lot of these players <laughs> were on the Jazz. He was on the Jazz, so... The Jazz produce good talent, I don't know what to tell you. I think if there is any player who would fit perfectly alongside LeBron James, well, there'd be a few players, but if anybody who is available, potentially available, it would be Bogdanovich. Now, I don't know if Detroit actually wants to trade him because they just extended him. I feel like they like his veteran leadership on the team, and also we know that he's a very good shooter, so I'm not sure if he's actually available. I mean, I guess for the right player he would be. So I'm not sure, again, if he's available. But if he is, the Lakers got to pick up the phone and try to get him.